What's going on everybody and welcome back to my channel Movie Files, Elliot back again with a brand new TV review and today we'll be discussing the first three episodes of a brand new Hulu original comedy murder mystery by the name of Only Murders in the Building which by the time this video is out the first three episodes will be available today to watch on Hulu and my goal by the end of this video is to let you know if it's worth checking out in this spoiler free review. Before we break it all down do me a favor and check me out on all my other social media accounts. If you all are new to the channel well welcome to the community consider subscribing and hitting that notification bell that way you all can get the alert from when I drop new content if you all enjoyed this spoiler free review well make sure to like and share the video it helps out the channel a lot but I also appreciate the support and in those comments let's talk about the series ladies and gentlemen let me know if this was something you were excited for and once you've seen the first three episodes what'd you think about it what was your favorite episode out of the three who's your favorite character what are you thinking about the comedy this cast the murder mystery are you invested in the story let's talk about it all in the comments below so again this will be a spoiler free review just going over the episodes, pros, cons, character breakdowns, and all that fun stuff. But before we break all that down, let me let you all know what the show is all about. Only Murders in the Building was created by Steve Martin and John Hoffman, and the show follows three strangers who are obsessed with true crime and suddenly find themselves wrapped in one when a death occurs inside their exclusive Upper West Side apartment building. The trio suspects murder and employs their precise knowledge of true crime to investigate the truth. The show stars Steve Martin, Martin Short, and Selena Gomez, and this Hulu original will consist of eight episodes and will premiere each Tuesday week by week. All right, so going into this new comedy murder mystery, I was so excited to see these icons work together again, and that is Steve Martin and Martin Short, who've worked together in movies and shows. I think they just have great chemistry together, and I don't have to let you all know who these guys are. They're legends, they're goats, they're icons, so I was excited to see them work together. And then you throw in Selena Gomez, who I don't listen to her music, but I think she's a pretty talented actress, so seeing that group of actors work together, talented individuals, and then you give me It's a Comedy with two comedic icons mixed in with a murder mystery i was sold on that just alone so going into this let's talk about the show the first three episodes starting off with my episode one breakdown which was titled true crime and the synopsis of that episode reads upper west side neighbors charles oliver and mabel bond over their shared love of true crime when a fellow resident dies in their building the trio is determined to solve this mystery and record a podcast at the same time so let me give you all just a quick character breakdown of the character starting off with steve martin who plays charles now charles is someone who used to be famous back in the day he was on a tv show in the 90s that was revolving around true crime and he was a detective so he's been kind of seeking for that validation in the present day time he lives in this gorgeous apartment in the upper west side of new york he's been there for over 30 years but he's unfortunately been there for a very long time by himself and that's kind of the the point of the character he's he has this old history that he's trying to chase. He goes to these auditions, but he can't really find the character that he really likes, and he just is really quiet. He keeps himself. He doesn't really interact with his neighbors until this murder happens, and that's when he stumbles upon meeting Oliver and Mabel, who are obsessed with true crime, and this is where Charles kind of re-energizes himself, and he now has a purpose, and he now has friends that kind of interact with while trying to figure out this crime, which brings us to the other character, Oliver, who is played by... Martin Short and Martin Short's character is a very interesting character. Now he used to be a famous Broadway director. He has some really high highs and some really low lows. He has a really big flop in his career that really kind of messes up his financial situation, but he's happy. He's smiling. He's one of those people that we all know in real life that is just the nicest person, a lot of good energy, but he, you know, there's some demons behind that smile. And that's kind of what you learn about that character within the first three episodes, that his financial situation, he kind of I don't want to say uses people, but he has this kind of uh, relationship with his family that they don't really trust him with money. He has this issue where he might not be able to live in this beautiful uh, apartment for much longer because of what he puts himself in. But again, he's someone that is always kind of seeking, oh, what are you all about? How, how can I you know, get to know you more? But at the same time, he's trying to seek this validation from other people. So I like what this character Oliver has to offer, which brings us to the kind of the oddball in the situation. You have these two older gentlemen who have had, you know, successful careers and then you look at Mabel who's played by Selena Gomez who's I would say 
probably in her mid 20s like how does she afford this type of building how does she make her way in there which leads to more of her mysterious side of this character especially when it comes to this murder mystery and and her past and what she used to you know who she used to associate herself with so again you mix in this kind of older generation of these kind of older stars mixed in with this kind of mysterious character it brings itself and lends itself to a really interesting uh, dynamic between these three people who they all have something in common they love murder mystery they love this podcast but then they're kind of seeking something to kind of give them purpose in life which leads them to teaming together to figure out who is the murderer of this person that died in their building so let's go over this episode one which i think episode one does a pretty good job of kind of establishing the characters putting us in a situation where again everyone's kind of keeping to themselves and then this murder happens and they're like hold on we all three of us love murder mysteries we're experts we can figure this out so this kind of one of those three characters kind of come into place and again you get a little bit of backstory these characters but you get more so of the backstory in episode two and three but you kind of see that again they're kind of looking for friendship they're seeking for validation that's kind of all what they have in common and they all want to try to see who was this murderer how did this person die and it it really kind of brings a really good uh, premiere episode but the thing that a, a good premiere episode does is it gives you that hook right so obviously i won't give the hook off here but i'll just say the ending of episode one really made me like oh well if that person knows that person what was that person's involvement in the murder so i'll just kind of leave it at that but i have to say that it was a pretty interesting way to end the episode which leads right into episode two which was titled who is tim cone oh no the group begins researching the victim meanwhile maple's secretive past starts to unravel so this second episode here really focuses on maple's character selena gomez and it kind of really dives deeper into how did she get attached to this building? How did she end up, you know, finding this building? Who is she looking over the building for and that apartment that she's in? So you kind of get a little bit more backstory on her as well as her past and who she used to hang out with and how who she used to hang out with may or may not have something to do with the person that died in their building. So you get more of that character, which unfortunately for me, what I really loved about episode one was seeing this trio again, these two older gentlemen mixing in with this younger lady and Selena Gomez and just seeing their dynamic with Selena Gomez being the main focus. It kind of doesn't give you that trio that we got in the first episode. So that's kind of my one criticism with the second episode is that the characters are kind of split away and it really kind of focuses on one character and kind of neglects the interesting aspect of the two other characters. But we get more of them in the third episode. But again, the th- the biggest thing in that second episode is, okay, Maple has some secrets and she has some, some past issues with some friends that kind of may lead into this main plot, which I thought was pretty interesting. So again, I didn't think the second episode was as strong, but it still has that mystery aspect, especially Especially after that hook of episode one, which ties perfectly into episode two, which kind of really opens the door into like, what is the main connection between all these characters, which brings us into the final episode, which was titled, How Well Do You Know Your Neighbor? Oliver employs his theater director skills to analyze the case. Meanwhile, Charles and Maple question a obsessive cat lover. So episode three to me was the best episode out of the three, because one of the things about the first two episodes, Steve Martin, Martin Short, two comedic genius. I didn't really... In- Kami is very subjective, right? I didn't really find the first two episodes that funny. It was cute. It was charming. Charming is a perfect way to to describe the first two episodes, but episode three was funny, and I won't describe the scene, but there's a scene involving Charles and Maple investigating one of their suspects, and I'll just say it involves blood, and it involves a frozen cat. I'll just kind of leave it at that. Once you see the episode, you know what I'm talking about, but this is another episode that kind of incorporates more of the people in the building. We have Amy Ryan's character get into the mix a little bit, which you can tell that might be a love interest for Charles' character, and then we also get a very famous celebrity that gets thrown into the mix, which I won't reveal that celebrity in this episode, but again, what I liked about this episode, and what I thought it did better than episode two, this episode three does focus on one primary character, which is Oliver, which we kind of get more backstory of his financial situation, kind of how he sees himself and, and the goals he has for himself. But unfortunately, his goals sometimes can hurt other people financially speaking. So we see his financials kind of bleed into the main story, which is kind of the main just of this story is kind of his backstory of this whole dynamic. But again, the suspect that they got to get in place. And then there's another suspect by the end of the episode that I thought was really uh, interesting dynamics to say the least. But again, the third episode to me was really a great mixture of episode one, the murder mystery aspect, but then giving me the comedy that I wasn't really getting those first epi- two episodes. So for me personally, episode three was easily the best episode. It hit on the comedy beats. It opens up the door to more of the mystery. And it, you really get to see this dynamic when they work together 
it's a pretty good trio of characters again oliver and his whole financial situation charles kind of keeping to himself but being kind of a person that's really shy and kind of awkward at points and again maple very mysterious very secretive past that is really going to make its way into the main plot so overall i gotta say i wasn't overly impressed by the comedy until episode three but nonetheless it's charming it has a really good sensibility to it the, the mystery is pretty interesting again when you learn more about maple and her connections that may or may not tie to this person that died in the building is really interesting and just again just seeing these icons just having a good time and just having you know just mystery being thrown in the mix i think mixes pretty well but i gotta say these episodes are about 30 minutes and it's going to be eight episodes in total and we got the first three me personally i don't think this is a show that has that type of week to week kind of conversational water cooler talk about oh what do you think about this what do you think about that it has a little bit of it but not to a week to week basis which to me i think the show should have just dropped all eight episodes at one time but that's just my thoughts i enjoyed the first three episodes but i don't think it has that type of like conversational interest in the show for me personally which brings me to my last point what do you all think about these three episodes should i review it on a week-to-week basis or do you think i should just come back maybe when the eighth episode drops and give you like my season overall thoughts let me know your thoughts in the comments again your favorite character your favorite episode your thoughts your theories on who the murderer may be and let's have a conversation about it in the comments thank you all for watching this review again if you haven't already make sure to like the video share the video leave your thoughts in the comment section subscribe to the channel if you haven't already hit that bell that way you don't miss any other content hope you all are staying safe hope you enjoyed this review we'll see you in the next video